did you apply for a job posting or were you interviewed for a position but never heard back from a recruiter about it? If this situation resonates with you, then continue watching this video until the end. I'm gonna share with you some insights why recruiters fail to get back to you and how you as a candidate can respond in such situations. Before we get into it, for those who don't know, I'm Nikita, a Shrum certified HR. I have over a decade of experience in hiring professionals. In recruitment and science, I'm passionate about helping other recruiters and job seekers in reaching their career goals. Now coming back to our main topic, when we don't hear back or when a communication suddenly drops off either from an employer or a candidate's sites during the hiring process, we use the term ghosting. Ghosting can happen either during a job application stage or any time afterwards throughout the hiring process. It could be after a recruiter's pre-screen, written assessment, technical interview, or even when you reach an offer stage. This is the first video in a two-part series on recruitment ghosting. This video is all about why employers ghost candidates and what you can do about it. In my next video, I'll be unpacking why candidates ghost employers and how employers can manage such situations. Plus, I'll share a bonus tip toward the end of the video, so stay tuned. Having said that, let me unpack for you why some employers ghost or cut off communication with candidates. But before we dive into it, let me tell that it's not always you did something wrong during the hiring process that led an employer not to communicate with you. There could be numerous other factors responsible for ghosting. Let's discuss them. Number one, offered or hired another candidate. And some of the reason for this could be, number one, when your skills and experience do not match with what a recruiter or hiring manager is looking for in a new role, they pass on your candidacy. Number two, when you reschedule interviews or delay submitting any assessments that is a part of the interview process, then there are chances that an employer already has some good candidates in pipeline and thus you miss out. Number three, they might have given an offer letter to their preferred candidate and are waiting on their response. Next, they might not have received a good feedback on you during the reference check. Or finally, when a recruiter or a hiring manager finds that you have an attitude problem, they may drop you off the hiring process. Now moving along, the second main reason for an employer ghosting is when a position went on hold. The company might decide not to fill an open position at the current time. And this could be due to a company's restructuring or any other internal reasons. Number three reason, position revised. Sometimes some hiring managers or recruiters realize that the job description isn't trying the right applicants or maybe attracting candidates who are better suited for a different role. So they decide to reword it. Or at times hiring managers add new skills and want to see different level of candidates altogether. Number four, hiring managers indecisiveness. Some hiring managers take longer or are not able to decide whether or not hiring a borderline candidate is a right choice. So they ask recruiters to see a few more candidates before they give their final call. Number five, slow moving positions. When a position is on back burner, most hiring managers or recruiters move really slow on such positions. Number six, budget issue. The budget is yet to be approved for an open position and the hiring managers and recruiters are still waiting for the green signal. Number seven, mergers and acquisitions. When mergers and acquisitions are in process, some hiring managers wanted to reassess their open positions altogether. Number eight, the concerned recruiter or the hiring manager left the company suddenly and the candidates who are in process are not documented anywhere. Number nine, the concerned recruiter or the hiring manager are busy with other projects or are sick or maybe on vacation. And this delays the hiring process. And finally, number 10, an employer's response might have ended up in your email spam folder. The reason why recruiters fail to inform you is because of four factors. Number one factor, overloaded recruiters. When a company's recruiters are overloaded with open requirements and are juggling several requisitions at a time, even the best of recruiters can miss closing the loop unintentionally. And this really gets messy 
when they don't have good recruitment text taken place to automate some of the mundane tasks. Another reason could be laid back attitude of some recruiters. They do not bother to close the communication loop, especially with unqualified candidates or applicants. Plus, some less experienced recruiters do not reply to rejected candidates in fear of how they would respond to them. So they try to avoid getting into tough conversations. Next, third party recruiters. When an employer relies on an agency recruiter, some agency recruiters don't do a great job of communicating with candidates. As an external recruiter, they work with several clients and often have to switch their priorities quickly so they get sidetracked on following up with their candidates. And last, no formal talent acquisition department. In some small companies and startups, hiring managers and generalist HR are responsible for recruiting as well. Besides their core job, they have to shell out extended hours for sourcing or pre-screening candidates. And therefore, at times, it really gets hard for them to reply to each and every one. Now, let's talk about what you should do when you don't hear back or when a communication drops off from an employer. Before that, if you are enjoying this video or learning something new, please make sure you subscribe to my Recruitment Insights channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you will never miss any of my future uploads. Now back to topic, follow-ups. There could be three different situations when you can follow up with an employer. Number one, if you don't hear back anything after applying for a position, then I would suggest reach out to the company's HR, recruiter, or the hiring manager directly via LinkedIn or an email address. Let them know that you have applied to a certain position. So in this case, if they were sidetracked, they may revisit your profile and let you know the further steps in the hiring process. In the worst case, if you have a hard time reaching out to any of these folks, better move on to the next opportunity. Number two situation could be when a recruiter has reached out to you directly via LinkedIn or any other platform for a position and you responded but haven't heard back afterwards, then it might be worth checking a company's website if there is a way to apply on the site, go for it. Or reach out to the company's HR or the hiring manager directly via LinkedIn or email and let them know that you had already been contacted about the position because that way it shows that you may be qualified for the position. And finally, the number three situation could be when you have passed the application stage and you are in an interview or an offer stage and you feel that the communication has dropped suddenly. In this case, you can send a follow-up email after a day or two of the timeline an employer communicated to respond to you. You can give a benefit of doubt that some recruiters, they don't do a great job in following through with candidates. If you still don't hear back, then just get over it and move on to the next opportunity. Don't feel rejected or stressed out. This is common these days. So don't waste more time and energy in chasing them. Life doesn't stop for anyone. Keep moving. You must have something better coming on your way, right? With that, now you know what ghosting is all about and why some employees do so and how you can handle it. Now here is a bonus tip. Do follow up only once. The reason is, if a recruiter or a hiring manager were really interested in you, they would definitely call you back. Also, let them know if a situation changes on your side, you will inform them. Give them a sense that you're not available forever and you may be gone if they delay much. Now you tell me in the comments below if you still have any questions regarding employers ghosting. I would love to reply. Also, if you enjoyed this session, be sure to let me know. And you can do so by giving a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribing to this channel so that you will never miss any of my future sessions. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next time.